Hello and welcome to everybody. Today we have a very special guest, UFC fighter Julio Arce. Can you please put a brief introduction, tell a few sentences on yourself and we can continue. Go for it. What's going on guys? My name is Julio Arce and I am from uh, Bayside, Queens, New York and I'm a featherweight in the UFC. How's it going? Great, Julio. Uh, when did you start uh, your martial arts career? I mean, as a kid. Uh, at which age did you start training? I started training when I was 13 years old. And um, I was a little like out of shape kid and I just wanted to do something that was for myself. So my sister brought me in to train at Tiger Shulman's and from there the rest is history. Great. I watched many of your fights, but I'm unsure which is your fighting style. I'd say mixed martial artist. What do you think? Yeah, mixed martial artist. As a mixed martial artist, uh, you know, I'm comfortable in all in all areas because I made sure that before I went to the pro levels that I was, you know, participating in a lot of jiu-jitsu tournaments, wrestling, boxing, and kickboxing, and doing amateur MMA fights. So I think I consider myself, you know, pretty well-rounded. Yeah, so I was right. Do you have a nickname? I don't have any nicknames. <laughs> yeah, fighters rarely don't have them. I haven't heard you have one, but great. Who are your coaches? Uh, my court, my coaches are um, our boxing coach Ray Belez, uh, Daniel Tiger Shulman, and Ron Shulman. Do you have favorite strike and submission? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. So they, they are they are my. Uh, wait, did you ask me if I had a favorite strike or submission? Uh, both, both. Yeah, well, for me, like striking, I just love throwing front kicks. And as submission, I love uh, rear naked choke. Oh, fantastic. Can we discuss your first professional fight? How did you finish your opponent? Was it a tough fight? Was it a tough experience after all? It's a big step, you know, first professional fight. Yeah, since uh, since I had a, like, a, like a lot of amateur fights and, you know, boxing, kickboxing and MMA, they, you know, right away when I went professional... Um, they gave me somebody who has fought was had fought in Bellator a couple of times. He had you know he had a pretty pretty good record, and it went to a decision. And then from there on, you know, like uh, my other couple fights, I got to finish. But this one, it was more of a decision because they gave me like somebody who fought in Bellator a couple of times who was a vet there. So, so this was your first fight against Bellator guy. Yeah, and you defeated in, in the ring co in the ring combat promotion. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, how did you choke out uh, your first submission win? Can we talk about that, Corey Simmons? Oh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, he, you know, Corey Simmons, it was, he, he was somebody just, you know, just wanted to come in. He was, you know, for me, like, I'm trying to, you know, build my record, and he just, I, he was wanted to be a danger striker. He wanted to knock me out, and then I was just like, okay, I'm just going to take you down and just uh, submit you, and that's it, man. Yeah. Uh, before uh, your UFC run, you were the king of the promotion, of some other promotion, ROC, I guess. How did you win yeah. that title for the first time? I mean, you you were you were on the top of the division for a very very long time. Yeah, the first time I fought a a, a guy named uh, Jason McLean, and he was a very powerful wrestler. So I just made sure I used my footwork, used my striking skills to keep him at bay, and just kind of win the round, like really I point them every single time, just frustrating where he couldn't take me down at all. So that's why, you know, for that fight, it was just, boom, out strike him and just move where he couldn't shoot, take me down. And then I won, uh, you know, I won the ring of combat championship. So your game plan was based on stopping takedowns, right? Yep. And just, just move, stopping takedowns, getting them tired. And my conditioning was kept at top notch, so then, you know, he would be wearing down and I just keep picking up the pace throughout the rounds. Yeah, in UFC I've noticed your cardio is very, very good. I've noticed that. How did you finish Thomas Vasquez? Thomas Vasquez was TKO. I was just like just lacing him up, using the jab, using my striking, and then um I think it just got to a point where I was just ground and pounding, ground and pounding, and the ref just had to stop step in and just stop the fight. You just caught up. Yeah. 
Great. You fought Brian Kelleher on two occasions. He is probably the only guy who defeated you on two occasions. What do you think of his, of your fights against him? Did something went bad? Did something went good? What do you think of those two fights anyway? For those two fights, it was a very good learning experience. Also, um, it was also my last fight, a couple of fights at, uh, at Bantamweight because by those points, uh, I was walking around much, you know, much heavier. And I made the weight. He missed weight both times for that fight, which was actually uh, a, a major part of this. But, um, you know, look, I was getting point where, where like the cutting weight was too much for me. And my body couldn't handle it. And, you know, when I went in there, I just felt like very lethargic. Like I just wasn't like I was ready to go, but my body just wasn't up to it. And, you know, look, he, he got the better of me those two fights. But. It was also my, my a chance for me to learn and then to just move up a weight class where I don't have to worry about a weight cut. Yeah, I agree about that. So then you bounced back against, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Francisco Sata. Yes. So how did you bounce back after these two losses? It must have been psychologically um, I mean, a very tough experience for you. Go for it. If, you know, for me, it was just the fact that uh, once I moved up, there was no weight cut, so it was easy. I felt, I felt strong. I felt energetic and then you know just for, for francisco zada it's like we were just going back and forth and i just you know took him down and choked him out against frank uh, buenafuente you fought uh, two times against that guy i heard that this guy is very very tough i don't know whether it's true or not but i heard the story that he is is it true or not you fought him two times yes he was a, a juco uh a juco national champion and you know, he was he was ruling the, the ring combat featherweight division at that point. But I knew his striking was very suspicious. And he, you know, he when we went in the first time, I think he was he just thought he was just going to take me down and just kind of finish from there. But the fact that, you know, for me, I had a good wrestling defense. He just started getting tired. I just started just peppering the whole every single round and just took it to a unanimous decision. And the second time, I knew he wasn't, you know, like the, the rematch happened pretty much instantly. And I knew the second time that, you know, within that small time frame, he wasn't going to get his striking the way he wanted to. And I knew and I knew that ahead of time. So then, you know, he went for takedown, defended it. I took his back, choked him out. Fabulous. Then you reached Dana White Contender Series. It was Dana White Contender Series fight. It, which is a very, very big step in the career of any fighter. How did you feel before that fight and how did you defeat your opponent? You know, I felt, you know, I felt uh, a little nervous at first because it was, uh, you know, it's, you know, um, it was like a chance to kind of display what you want in front of, you know, Dana White himself and, you know, the, the UFC brass. But then, you know, once I went in there, I was just like, you know what? I gotta finish this, dude. I only got one, you know, one chance. First round didn't go. It went like eh, so so. Second round came out, and I was just like, just pouring it on him and just barraged them with punches. Yeah, I know. I watched that fight and uh, got to say, in the first round, it was kind of how to say it was kind of a good round, very good round, first one mm -hmm. for both fighters, very very good. But yeah, you defeated him, and then your uh, debut at UFC against Dan Ige. Well, Dan Ige is. I'm not gonna lie to you, one of my favorite fighters, so way to go, great <laughs> victory. What do you think of that fight? Thank you. You know, that that was a that was just my breakout fight right there because I was so excited that I finally, you know, like I, I, even though it was a, a last minute fight, you know, the fact that I was able to fight you know, like they were like, yo, I'm gonna put you in. I'm like, I'm ready to go. I was so excited that day. And um yeah, you know, like I I, was, I didn't feel nervous. I was just felt excited that I finally made it to like the big league, like the UFC. And then you know we fought a we fought a hard fight, and that dude just did not go down. It was super tough. So, you know, we just kept going back and forth. And I, you know, I I took the win. And you know, like from there, look at him now. He's got a, he's on a five five winning streak. So, congrats to him, man. You know, we both learned a lot from those fights. Yeah, I agree. I was watching that fight and uh, to be honest, uh, people sometimes think that fight is boring if it goes to judges' scorecards, but I've seen some fights that went to judges' scorecards that were very, very great to watch and it was one of them. Uh, against Daniel Tamur, you had pretty much uh, great uh, tactics, I believe, because Daniel Tamur is primarily a striker and you choked him out. Yeah. What do you think? 
Yeah, for him, you know, like it was they, they my corner called was like get the takedown, grabbed his leg, took him to the ground, and then you know that's all she wrote. Then I took his back, and he just felt pretty. You know, he just kind of just let me latch on, and that's it. He didn't really put up much of a fight. Yeah, I agree. Against Shaman Marash, uh, I disagree. Split decision. I think it was two rounds for you. But uh, do you have something to say about that fight? Because I was doing live commentary for One TV, and on many occasions I said it was very unfair. You know, for a local TV. So what can you yeah. say about that? I think look that that was a very close fight. Yes, I got dropped twice. I had his back. Second round it was him. First round it was like up in the air. Third round I took. And I think the fact that I was the I was I was a bloody mess in that fight, it kind of like they gave it at the edge to him, and they were like, you know, look look how much damage he's caught, even though it was like a little cut right here, and I was just like pouring blood. But it is what it is, man. You know, like look, it just showed that that dude rocked me twice, dropped me, sat me on my ass, and then I just got back up and I just kept fighting. So, you know, there's like there's there's no quitting me, and. He, he couldn't put me away, so I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I know you got rocked two times, but uh, the question is uh, why I'm asking, because uh, I I watched the fight and I've noticed that you pushed the pace all the time. You were the aggressor in that fight, and that's the reason why I was pretty much uh, weird by that decision. Yeah, you know, like, look, I... I Whatever the who knows what the judges see. I mean, you yeah. see it in even like other UFC fights. Like you're thinking this person's winning, all of a sudden the other person wins. You're like, how? It's like, what are you guys looking at? But who knows? Who knows? With them, it's always something. Yes. Yeah, definitely got to agree about Julian Ross. It was the best fight of you I've ever seen. I was watching it, of course, and uh, you did something that's kind of. Uh, I'll tell you something, I'm a kickboxer for a very, very long period of time and when you're stuck against the fence, it's almost impossible to throw the high kick the way you did. So can you please elaborate what you did? It's kind of impossible strike because when your back are tucked against the fence, it's kind of very, very hard to land it. What did, how did you land that left high kick? It was a short one though. So the thing is, you know, the, 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 I think just the advantage of being a southpaw helps because, you know, I'm, you know we're both have on the same open side. So the fact that, you know, he put me against the fence, if, if I was orthodox, I think he would have squared me up. But the fact that I was southpaw, it made it a little dangerous. So I just went left hand and I kept my weight going in the same direction of my punch to then give me room to throw that kick right up and sneak it in behind the left hand. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking you is because I'm a southpaw too and uh, that strike is very, very hard to do. I mean, you must, uh, how to say, you must buckle your knee intentionally to do that. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. you must intentionally do that. It's kind of short strike. It's not normal for kickboxing. Don't know, don't know which is your exact style, but for kickboxing you can do it. But it's just not a normal strike. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, I had to like bring my knee in, yes. and then at the very end, just like snap it out, just to be like, boom, <laughs> just to land a flush. Yeah, you caught him great with that strike. What happened against Hakim Davodu? So for that fight, I think it was uh, it was it was a close fight. Yes. You know, it was it was it was just a weird fight. And like the first round, I, I got like a nerve got kicked in my leg where I just kind of lost like feeling. I couldn't like stand on it. You remember that Michael Chandler fight where he kind of his ankle just kind of gave out. Yes. And he just like he, he, like he, the ref stopped it, but he wasn't rocked or anything. His just ankle was just like all weird. Same concept, but it was like my whole from like. Uh, my shin down to my foot so i couldn't put any weight on it so and then uh i took him down and i think what i was doing i was getting drawn more into his style of fight than using my style of fight i should have wrestled him a little more but you know anything he hit me it wasn't like anything that was like gonna hurt put me in danger but it was it was it was just a weird fight i think it was just like you know like styles make fight it was just like we kind of were stalemating each other in a way and I think I kept kind of drawing myself more into his style of fighting than doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, I agree on that. Uh, can you please explain that part? Because uh, you mentioned uh, Mike Chandler and so on, and you mentioned your chin. Uh, sorry, your shin, sorry. So what yeah. did exactly happen? What uh, created the greatest problem in that fight? Can you please elaborate? It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like he kicked, and I think he hit like a nerve where it just shut down, like from from you know like the the lower half of my leg to my you know down and i just 
I couldn't put weight on it. And when I thought I put weight on it, my foot was actually like folded in and I was like, oh, I was feeling weird. So like, it's like I had no feeling in it uh, until like halfway into like the second round where I got the feeling back kind of. Yeah. I know, I know. I mean, uh, I ended the uh, bachelor science. He kicked your nervous peroneus. That's how we call it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So would you like to add something to this interview? Maybe to greet someone, maybe greet sponsors. Would you like to mention something else? I just, man, just, uh, thank you for having me, man. And I just, you know, always got to give it to uh, up to all the people that have been following my journey and just everybody on my team, you know, from uh, team Tiger Showman's to my strength conditioning coach, uh, a uh, coach Asia Campbell, to also Frank and Um uh, My teammates always there, you know, um, I, I got to give a shout out to my teammate uh, Shane Burgos, who actually just made it to the top 10 in the world. So huge congratulations to him. And, you know, we're just, you know, we're once this whole coronavirus thing is over we're gonna be coming back stronger than ever so can't wait for that yeah amazing thank you so much for this i will make video now creating maybe you can expect it in three four hours i will post it on my channel and i will send you a link <laughs> you got it my man yeah thank you thank you so Take much care. catch you next time Dude. have a great day brother catch you next time later